We can take our model from this to an image like this in just the click of a button. We've also got upgrades to tools like distance guides, which we can now adjust to where they reference to, as well as some interface upgrades like the tool guides. If you hover over the top of the tool, it'll give you more information on that tool and how to use it. And these are just a few of the new tools and upgrades that we'll see in the ARCHICAD 28 Tech Preview. Timestamps are below, so feel free to skip ahead to any bit that you like. Now, when we open up ARCHICAD 28, you'll see a new home screen with our recent projects, just like some of the previous opening screen. But in this version, we've also got sample projects just in below, as well as links to learning and the latest news. The sample project is pretty cool. If we just download them and go open, this one is by Enzyme. We can jump into the 3D and see how they've modeled up their project, as well as the surrounding context. Not to mention how they've also set up the view maps and the different kinds of views that they use for their project. We've got some cool isometrics and some different views that have been set up in different styles, as well as floor plans, elevations, and other typical views that you'll come across in a usual project. It's cool to see other firms' workflows and how they've set up their ARCHICAD file. Again, thanks to Enzyme for sharing this one. It's a very cool, simple project. All right, now onto the new tooltip. If we hover our mouse over the top of one of the tools, say like the roof tool, we'll now see a new dialog box pop up. If we hover our mouse down on further to where it says show me how, it's now going to bring up an extra dialog box which we can cycle through showing us tips on how to use the tool. So we're currently at one of four. So if I cycle through, it's going to show me more and more tips on how to use that tool. If I exit out of this one, we can do this for any of the tools on this left-hand panel. So if there is a tool that you haven't got around to using, say like the Morph tool, and go show me how, we can get little bite-sized bits of information on how we can use the tool. If we say go to the object tool and just hover our mouse on that right-hand side of the tool and we click that little arrow button, it's going to show us the favorites for that tool. So again, if I say go to the door tool and hover it over that right-hand side, then click on that little arrow. It's going to pop out the favorites for that tool, which is a handy little shortcut to access the favorites. With the physical render based system, check this out. This is the original 3D, and this is the 3D with the physical based render system active. So if we pan on around, we've got a cool new way of visualizing our model. If we right click and go into our projection settings and we change the light in our view and go OK, we can see quite the difference with the quality of the 3D view. Uh, so this is the physical based render system, and this is the typical 3D render system. Physical based render system, typical 3D view. ARCHICAD handles it pretty well, just as far as the actual load that it puts onto the computer. So I can pan around this, around this view, and it's not really lagging with my computer too much. Just so you get a bit of an idea of what it looks like on the inside, let's compare the physical based render system, which is being shown right now, to the typical 3D. We've got much softer edges around those shadows. Just so we get a couple of different examples, let's check it out now with this building here. This is the typical 3D view and back to the physical base render system. This can look significantly different depending on the time of the day. So this is currently at 8 a.m. If we were to put it to say like a later afternoon type shot, say around about 4 p.m. and we go, okay, it's going to cast the light and the shadows very differently. Now to turn on and off the physical base render system, we just need to go up to options, then go to work environment, and then we go to more options. Within the more options, You'll see just down the bottom here, under experimental features, enable physical render based rendering in 3D. So if we click this one off and we go OK, we're going to come back to our typical 3D again. All right, so let's jump onto the AI visualizer. This time it's being built directly into ARCHICAD 28. So this time you don't have to go through the extra installation process. To find it, we just go up to window, we go to palettes, then just down the bottom, we can click on AI visualizer which will bring up this just here. So for a practical example, it's actually really easy to use. Let's type in a modern cottage and let's give it a style. Anime style and let's click generate. It typically takes around about a minute, maybe two, to generate an image. Hey, look at that. And we've got our beautifully generated AI image with the context of our building form. From here, we can save our result. Let's try a different style. Let's go realistic and then we'll go generate. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I think tools like this will be best used to quickly get iterations on ideas for potential claddings for the exterior of buildings. And the part where it comes in really handy, contextual to the model that we're generating it from. So if I go into say like an isometric view like this, and then I hit generate, you'll see here it's got the actual framing of the model, which directly corresponds to the image that we generate. Now let's take a closer look at the image. It's textured in a visually aesthetic way, but if we zoom in, like zoom in really close, we're gonna see a lot of artifacting in different areas of the building. So this kind of stuff isn't going to replace the drawings that we would say give to a builder or to a council, and maybe not even a client. 
To me, this is just a great way to get a visual on what this can look like with different cladding types. Now, we've only been playing with it on 0% creativity, so it's trying to keep as much of the building similar as it can. So if we give it way more creativity, say bump it up to like 90, let's go back to say our front view and then we'll go generate. Again, I don't think it's a replacement for what we do. I think it's just another tool we can use to generate inspiration really quickly. Oh, hey, look at that. Bumping creativity up to 90, you can see how it's altered the building quite a bit now. It's extended just out to that right-hand side, but on the whole, it's still kept a lot of the context, like the dormer roof and the gable, as well as the chimney and the windows at the front. Just before we do move on, I'll share a couple more images that the AI visualizer has come up with. Starting with this one, got a couple of the anime styles, just to see the different variations within the same style, just by clicking generate a couple of times. Here we've got a few more realistic styles. I think it's still better for visualizing different materials than the actual realism and the modeling itself. I do think it could be a powerful tool for creating inspiration for a facade, especially being able to generate so many variations within such a short amount of time. All right, moving on to the isometric aerial view. We can get a bit of artifacting in different areas, but we can just run it again and get a new iteration with a bit of a cleaner result. And now with a completely different style of house, we can see how different the variations can be. All right, and on to distance guides. So when we have something selected with distance guides turned on, we'll see these blue markers pointing out to the closest objects to them. Now to make sure it's turned on, we go up to guides, and then go show slash hide distance guides. Below here, you'll also see some new options. So we can change where it's referenced to, whether that's the edges or the reference line and which part of the door or window. So whether it's at the edges of the window or if it's taken from the center of the window. One of the new features with the distance guides is that we can now grab and drag the point that it's referencing from. So if I click it here, I can now click into this, into this dialog just here and say type in 3000 and go enter. And from there, it's going to reshuffle the element to the offset. Even if it isn't picking up to exactly what we want, we can manually adjust it now. Speaking of upgrades, let's go to the new design options. So there's a couple of interface updates with the design options. At the moment, we've got no options. If I want to create a new one, what I can do, I can select my entire model. I'll deselect it. Let's say I want to create some variations on the model. I can create this plus button just here and it's created a new option. And from here, I can go relink. So that's gonna link everything in that view that I've just selected to that new option. Now, because it's inactive, when I click okay, it's going to make everything disappear, which is perfect. We're gonna go okay. It's all disappeared. So now when I turn that eye on, everything's going to pop back. Now, if I wanna create a new option from here, what I can do is I can right click and I can go duplicate. There's linked elements. Yep, let's go okay. I'll call this option two. And just like that, we can have two different options we can go between. So now let's make a couple of modifications just so we can see some difference in the examples. I'll double click option two. All right, and we've made a few changes. So from here, we can cycle between the two options just by double clicking. Now, if we want to create another variation from this, I can right click and I can go duplicate and go okay, go option three. So with this new dialogue, it just makes it much quicker and easier to be able to do it all within this one interface just here. Now, if we want to compare this to the previous design options, just so we can get a stark contrast of what is different, this is the current ArchiCAD 27 version. So if we compare this to this, we've got a lot more options in this dialog. If I want to delete these options, I can just right click, delete. I'll delete the elements for this one. Same thing for this option just here. I'll delete this one, just delete the elements. Now the original, this one just here, I'm going to go ahead and delete this option but I'm going to link the elements back to the main model and I can go, okay. And now it's just gone back to the main model without any design options. So I feel like the tool is getting a bit more intuitive on the whole to be able to play with the design options all just within the one dialogue. You do still have the option to open up the design manager for more custom combinations, but for quicker options, I think this is a really good update. All right, and now on to keynotes. So just here, you'll have noticed some notes around the elevation. Now to use the keynotes, we'll want to go up to window, then to palettes, and then keynotes. So this will open up this dialog box just here. And you'll notice I've got a couple of keynotes here already. So RF1, so roof one, and RF2, roof two. And I've got some notes here on my elevation, just here and here as well as in a little legend just here. So basically what keynotes is trying to do is so that you can edit a note in one place, and with that single edit, it edits it everywhere else on your plan. So if I go into this keynote just here and where it says RF1, if I change that to RF10 and press enter, it's going to go through and automatically update all of those notes. So I'm currently on the layout here at the moment, but this is actually inside of a view. So if I open up the view, I've got these labels pointing to the roof. 
Now, if I double click this level, it's kind of like auto text, but in a way that can be centrally organized from this keynote area just here. Now, with the legend, just down the bottom here, we can go place legend. And on the plans, I'll just click. Now, I've already got one here, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. If I want to change settings on this legend just here, I can go up to the tool settings just up the top. And inside of here, I can change the spacing between the words, the font type, the font size, if it has any borders, as well as how many fields are included within the legend itself. For now, we'll just go with the two and we'll go okay. Now, the crazy thing is with these legends, we can actually have it set so that it only shows up the notes that we've actually got shown on the layout. So if I go back into the settings for a second, visible keys on layout drawings. So right now I've got this RF2 just over here, but if I go into the elevation, I'll go ahead and delete it. I'll come back into the cover page and it automatically updates the legend so that it's not showing anything that's not shown on the layout. So for this one, it's got the potential to be a massive time saver. So instead of going back through the elevations and changing the individual notes, we can have a central place where we can change all the notes from and place a legend on the layout, which is relevant to what's been shown on the layout. Typically, I do prefer minimizing the amount of labels on top of a drawing. So having these notes which point back to a legend, it's a feature that could come in pretty handy. Next up, we've got openings for root. Now, as far as use for this one, I think it'll predominantly be for things that protrude through the roof that need to be shown in say something like a section. So if we've got like a chimney, like we've got here and we need to cut a section through, let's go to the opening tool. I'm gonna to make this one so that the orientation is vertical. I'm gonna zoom on in. I'll place it roughly on the roof for now. From there, I can deselect the tool. I'll select the opening that I've just created and then I can drag this so it lines up with the chimney. So now the opening is going to be protruding all the way through that roof. So now if I go into my floor plan, then I open up this section. I've got cut through that chimney. I'll go open source view. It's cut out that section for that chimney just there. Compared to if I say delete it and then open it back up, you'll see we've got that intersection there just at the moment. So it's gonna help clean up the 3D model. If we've got things like plumbing vents, if we've got lifts that are protruding up through a roof space, altogether, I think it's just useful to be able to use the tool on more elements. So not a bad upgrade. 